Okay, right. Peter, your uh, 15 minutes starts now. Go. All right. Uh, thanks again, Mark. Um, you know, we appreciate being invited, and uh, it's, uh, you know, congratulations on your nothing but branding and the continuing success there with uh, uh, nothing but SharePoint. So we appreciate the invite. Um, this is a great opportunity for us because we, we wanted to announce some things at the SharePoint show, and uh, we decided to, to give people a sneak preview about some of the upcoming tools and how we organize uh, our, uh, our thoughts as far as our product line and, uh, and kind of give people a quick demo of some of the new stuff that's coming out that they can see in the next couple of weeks or they can stop by the, uh, the booth in Las Vegas at the SharePoint conference. So uh, as everybody knows, we, we kind of started from a, an information management background. So, you know, information architecture, being able to organize and classify your content, uh, which led us to different areas as our customers started to push us uh, into um, uh, directions where people wanted to classify and, and reorganize their content and just not upgrade their mess, which I think is an important part of migration, and I'm sure some of the other vendors will echo that, uh, the concept of, of don't, upgrading, uh, don't upgrade your mess. So uh, what, what we want to focus in on today is, is, is not only the migration part, which we'll, we'll give you a quick demo on, but also talk about what else you can do during this process, because it's a great time for people to kind of rethink what's in their file system or tag their information uh, and also be able to, um, um, you know, basically organize it so people can find it more usable and findable. So, um, okay. So the other thing is, is we announced recently today uh, a new tool uh, that starts at uh, its entry level. It's more for power users. It's an affordable way for people to get in and start uploading their content into SharePoint from various different sources. Uh, it's inexpensive as far as SharePoint tools go out there, and I'm sure when you look around, you'll, you'll see. Uh, it starts at $2.95 per, per user and um, gives you unlimited content from the file system and other SharePoint sources. Uh, and it's uh, farm-based, so you can, you can take a look at it and give it a try. Some of the things that's pretty unique about it is uh, it supports, obviously it's a five minute install, you can download it from our website today and give it a try. We also were one of the first companies to release a Mac OS X version. We've seen a lot of people, especially with Office 365, start to use Mac clients and uh, you know, we wanted to make sure we were there for that market as well. So I encourage you to go check that out on our website. I also want to talk about today a little bit about enterprise migrations versus power user migrations. Uh, which is a really important differentiator. A lot of people are, are interested in migrating huge amounts of data, terabytes, they have customizations, they have uh, features, they have custom DLLs, custom web parts, custom content types, custom everything. And they're not really a good candidate for a database attached because either their, their stuff is too customized and they want to migrate the content out and some of the features and leave some things behind or they've, um, they've started to, to kind of rethink their content and maybe want to reorganize their stuff, not simply just forklift it to the next version. So it, it really depends on what your goal is, who the user is, what their knowledge of SharePoint is. And I'm going to show you some different tools that allow you to take a look at that. Um, okay, so I'm going to run into the, the demo real quick. So uh, what I want to first start with is the ability to um, uh, to migrate a site. That's, that's the basic everybody's looking for. They're looking to migrate a site, a list, a library, item, whatever they'd like to do. So if you, if you look at the interface, you can just load your SharePoints in 2003, 2007, um, you know, even 2013, premise-based, uh, hosted, wh whatever you want. Uh, is, Metaviz is agentless. There's no server-side installs. It installs in five minutes. As long as you have permission to do an action, you'll have permission. Uh, to do it with, with MetaViz. So, uh, for example, a simple thing, if you want to move from a 2007 site to a 2010 site, I'll, um, I'll, um, I'll show you how it works. I mean, it's pretty easy. You can just right-click and do copy. You can, um, you can drag and drop it. So if I want to move this to a 2013 site, I can just go ahead and move it, and it's going to bring up a dialog window. Like, what do you want to do with this? Do you want to copy it to an existing site, copy it to a new site? Um, and uh, you want to promote it to a site, site collection if it's a, a sub-site, and you can decide what you want to do. 
And when you, when you select that, you have all kinds of different options. And you can have different profiles. So for example, I have a publishing site profile, I have others. These are more enterprise grade features where you're looking to um, kind of customize and manipulate the data as you migrate it from one place to another. Like you can rename your site. And then you have your site copy options. You want to copy the permissions. You want to copy groups, web parts. You want to do features. You want to do objects, master pages. You could decide as far as list copy options what you want. You want to take all the versions or just some of the versions, uh, views, workflows, um, and those are SPD workflows or, or uh, out-of-the-box workflows. You can just pick what you want. Uh, deferred required fields. So there's a lot, of, a lot of things that you can manipulate during a migration process that you want. And you even have advanced options. So rather than migrating um, you know, all in one big batch, you can kind of batch it together and migrate and then do incremental copies once you've already migrated. And it can show you that a little bit later. So incremental copies, another big enterprise feature where you can migrate in waves and then, um, and then you know, finally cut over to, to the, uh, the site. You, know, you have your alerts, you, have, you can re-template things, all kinds of stuff. And, and as long as you have your, um, uh, your look and feel and other things, you, you'll see that. So what I'm going to do today is just kind of show you what, what you can select uh, and give you an idea of what you're going to do. So basically, it tells you what you're going to do from here to there and summarize it. Now, you have a couple different options here. You can actually run the migration. You can generate a script. So the script will give you a command line, which is what large enterprises do. They generate a, a sample migration, and then they use scripting to do that on a, on a global basis. So you may have a 1,000 sites or a 1,000 site collections, and they want to organize when they want to move that at different times. So the scripting is all granular, and you can copy it to a clipboard. You can paste it. You can run it in Windows Explorer, uh, Windows uh, uh, Task Scheduler. There, there's lots of ways to access that that information. And something new that's uh, that's really good, and and uh, I know one of our, our our great competitors there has something similar. Is we have a pre-migration assessment report that we're rolling out in time for the show. So this way, when you're moving from 2007, you can hop directly to 2013. There's some things that just aren't really supported or may give you trouble during migration. Um, and uh, you know, we're going to be able to do a, basically a virtual migration before doing that. So if you click this button, you can do an assessment report, which will tell you if there's any problems that may be problematic. So just like you have a pre-upgrade checklist, this is the, the same kind of concept. So if you run that, it's going to ask you to save it. You can, you know, you can save it, and um, it'll run that information and not actually do the migration, but actually tell you if there's any issues that are going to come up. Like you have Fab 40 templates, you have custom installations, how many workflows you have, all the good stuff there. And it's all, it's all multi-threaded, so you can just run it in the background and, and, uh, and go from there. So that's, that's some of the, the new stuff there. I also want to show you some of the tagging capability we have. So when people migrate, they have the opportunity to re-tag their information. Uh, so for example, here, if we go and move this information from documents, you, hear, you can see I have some SOPs. If I want to migrate that content from one place to another, I can just select all those documents just using Windows Explorer, and I can drag and drop them to a list or library, and it'll bring up a dialog that gives me an opportunity. So I could go over here and I could do next, and if I want a map, so maybe I know that these documents are SOPs and they have certain fields that I want to auto-populate. I can go ahead and do that, and that'll auto-populate based upon the term store, the lookup list, uh, anything that you have in that particular field to try to match the content that's within the document. So if we just do some auto-tagging here, uh, this category um, also can be auto-tagged as well. because It's a lookup list. And if we click Next, you have some more options that you want, or you can do an assessment on that information. But if we click Finish, you'll notice that it's going to basically migrate and tag the content uh, from the file system, or it could be another SharePoint site, and apply the metadata. So we'll go, and while that's running in the background, we'll go to this uh, site. Here's the SOPs. Uh, see when it's done. Yep, so we're all good there. Um, so now if we refresh the screen, it's going to show us those documents tagged. Uh, so you can see that this document was tagged with storage uh, and the department. If we open that document up, 
you can see where it got that information from. So here you can see UCLA, it actually used the synonym and changed it to University of California. Um, you can see the information that it, it grabbed out of the document, being able to do that. So this will help a lot when people are migrating to try to apply metadata and take advantage of some of the, uh, uh, the features that people have. So how am I doing on time, Mark? Peter, you have five minutes left. I was going to give you a five-minute warning, then I'll give okay. you a two-minute warning. All right, that's great. So, so that, that's a great opportunity for people to take a look and be able to manage that information, tag it, classify it, move it around, do different things. Uh, so being able to do that is, is great. Um, that's, um, and you can also, let me just uh, run that. You also will get a log anytime you do anything. So anytime you run something within MetaViz, you're always going to get a log. It tells you, did it succeed? Did it fail? Uh, if you had any failed items, another great enterprise feature is you can reprocess failed items. So for example, if you have a slow server and you get timeouts when you're moving 15,000 documents on, you know, on 100 documents, you don't want to try to figure out which documents failed. You can reprocess the ones that, that failed uh, if there are any in this list. And you also have a history of anything that you've done before, how long it took, and uh, you can always view that, that information back in there. So, and you can always load your logs. You can see statistics as to how long it took to do the, the various different activities. So the other thing you can do is you can compare. So if you want to compare two sites, you can compare this, this site, which happens to be a, uh, a 2013. You can right-click on it. And you have all kinds of options. So we can, we can compare with each other. We can compare each other live. And we can see the differences uh, between these sites, either at a list level, a term store level, whatever level you're looking at, permissions, views, uh, whatever happens to be there. So that's a great feature that people can check out. Uh, the, um, the other thing that, that people like is just the ability of all the powerful features to manage information within the tool. So if I go and I want to manage uh, the term store, for example, I can right click on it and uh, it's going to give me all kinds of analysis options. So if I want to look at um, the term store, I can do that. And if you have the, the architect product, you can take a look at term stores and you can edit them within, um, you know, within the, the interface. So for example, if I go to countries, it's one of the favorite, you can see that I have synonyms, I have all kinds of things, and if I want to start editing these things, I can bulk create terms, I can edit term sets, I can delete them, I can export them to a CSV if I want to manipulate them using Excel. I can do all kinds of different things in order to, uh, uh, to manage that information right through the tool um, and be able to manage that uh, quickly and easily. Which is, which is really powerful, especially when you're trying to apply additional information. Peter, you've got two minutes. Okay, great. So the other thing that's, that's really, really neat, and I, I know you're going to hear more about this from some of the other vendors, is, is the governance piece. And, and what governance means to us is, is, is maybe different than some other the vendors, but we think governance is, is around content. So if you can't analyze your content, you're going to have a lot of trouble. So if you can't see what's in a document, does it have a credit card number, does it have Security number, social security numbers, does it have secret, uh, you know, tagging, anything like that. You want to be able to be able to create rules and manage them. So with this, you can basically go through and you can run a rule pack. So for example, if you have a, a FISMA, which is the Federal Information Security uh, Policy, you can apply that. You can apply that to your file system. You can apply that to SharePoint. You can apply that to your Dropbox account. It doesn't really matter. You can go ahead and select the ones that you want and be able to run a specific uh, set of rules or, or sites based upon on that, that information. And then once you run something, it'll, it'll generate a report. So if we create a rule, um, if I, for example, here's a, a regex rule to check for a secret. If I want to create a custom rule, I can just edit these rules or I can create a new rule and do that. So if you want to check this out at the, at the SharePoint conference, uh, you can see some of this stuff, or if you want to see a preview edition, you can reach out to MetaViz and we'll get you a copy of it. Uh, but Mark, thanks again for letting us show some of the new stuff. We encourage people to download and try all the products um, and, uh, and let us know if they have any questions. Wonderful. Thank you, Peter. That was Peter Sinescu from MetaViz Technologies.